As sad as it is to say, this Boston Bruins team had a great run, but the Stanley Cup window is over for this group as we know it. Totally different vibe post-game in this Bruins playoff series coming to an end than it was last season when they lost Game 7 to the St. Louis Blues. That was an absolute crushed team that knew they had let a golden opportunity slip through their fingers to add to their legacy, to add another Stanley Cup. 2010 against the Philadelphia Flyers when they collapsed after a 3-0 lead in the series. Uh, that was as shocked and stunned of a dressing room after a playoff loss in that Game 7 loss to the Flyers as I've ever seen with the Boston Bruins. But this was something different. There was sadness. There was a, a, a level of loss. and almost felt like kind of a funeral setting uh, because I think this Bruins team knows that the core group is going to be different as we know it moving forward because they can't keep simply doing the same thing. They went up against the Tampa Bay Lightning team that dispatched them in five games for the second uh, time in three postseasons. The Tampa Bay Lightning are younger, they're deeper, they're faster, they're more talented. The only area the Bruins really had an advantage over the Tampa Bay Lightning in this series at the start of the playoffs was maybe goaltending, where Tuka Rask was slightly better than fellow Vesna Trophy finalist Andre Vasilevsky. But that's really the only area the Bruins had any advantage. They still can't score five on five against the Lightning, five even strength goals in five games. They couldn't defend Braden Point and Nikita Kucherov until Kucherov finally uh, went out with an injury. Uh, they certainly uh, couldn't throw the third line out there that Tampa did with the additions of Blake Coleman and Barclay Goudreau at the trade deadline, who are far better trade deadline acquisitions than Nick Ritchie and Andre Kasha turned out to be. They had no answers for Andre Pilat, who had five goals in the five-game series. So if you're the Bruins and you're building this team, you have to look at the Lightning and say, this is a team in our division. This is a team that we're going to face every year in the postseason. And we can't run our business and our team assuming that they're going to get upset in the first round like they did last year, which is what allowed the Bruins to go all the way to the Stanley Cup final and get to Game 7 because the light, somebody else did their dirty work and got rid of the Lightning in the first round. So if you have a team in your division you're not getting past in the postseason every year, you need to do something different. You might be the second best team in the NHL. You need to do something different to get past that Lightning team uh, to be a better matchup against them. Right now the Bruins are older. They're not as deep. Uh, you can see them start to get injured and slowed down and not as effective as the playoffs are going on. Patrice Bergeron's 35, David Krejci is 34, Zidino Chara is 43, Brad Marchand is over 30 years old. I think there's a lot of question as to whether Tuka Rask is going to come back with this team or not after leaving the team to understandably deal with family issues. But this is the second time in a couple of years he's had to leave the team where his personal life is conflicting with his professional life at the Bruins. Hard to pay a goalie $7 million a year if you can't consistently rely on him to be there when you need him. So you put all this stuff together into a ball. You evaluate what the Bruins have done against the Lightning over the last couple of years, and you say there needs to be big-time changes with this Bruins team. You build around Charlie McAvoy and David Pasternak. You leave Patrice Bergeron and Brad Marchand as a duo on that top line that you build around as you expect less from them when they're in their 30s and you start to bring in younger players and you start to rebuild everything else, including letting Tory Crew go in free agency. Uh, you decide maybe it's a short money deal for Zidane Chara, but you're not going to bring him back if it's going to hamstring you with a flat, flat salary cap going forward. And I think there's going to be a lot of changes on this Bruins team. They need to get bigger up front. They need to get younger. They need to get deeper. Basically, they need to be a much better match against the Tampa Bay Lightning team that has dominated them the last two team times they've played in the playoffs. So the window is closed for the Boston Bruins. It's time for them to rebuild about, around some of the younger players. I have a feeling we don't know when the hockey season's coming back. That's another big unknown. But I have a feeling when we do, this Bruins team is going to look a lot different. And for now, until that happens... I'm going to go enjoy a nice Dunkin' Donuts coffee. Uh, it's pumpkin season, and I'm going to start to think about what the changes are going to be for the Boston Bruins because I think there's going to be plenty of them.